Hey there, how are you? A couple of days ago I told you that Flatpak is getting some grounds in the Linux uh, world, right? Um, and now let's take a look at some of the negatives uh, of the Flatpak system, right? But before that, have you noticed that now I have a thank you button in this channel? If you want to support me a little bit, you can click it. Uh, anyways, I don't wield a rich English vocabulary, so I'm going to try to, you know, uh, give you what I have in my mind. So how does security and privacy work in computers? We distribute trust, right? We distribute trust towards uh, those who are making the application, those who are uh, checking the source code and etc. right? So if we have a proprietary application, then of course there is no source code available, so we need to put our trust into the maker of application. I don't know if you're using Windows, obviously you're trusting Microsoft not to sell your data. If you're using Adobe Photoshop, you trust Adobe not to take your photos, you know, and sell them to other people or use them for their AI training. Oh wait. So with open source, you trust the community who is checking this source code. You trust the maker of this code. And then you trust your distribution of choice, like maybe Debian or Arch Linux, uh, that they are going to compile this code and not give you any malware. Usually all of this is done in the open, so there is plenty of hands uh, and eyes involved in all of this. So you can pretty much trust that you are not going to be the first one to step on the mine if anything does happen in, in this um, ecosystem, right? So with Flatpak, uh, you put your trust primarily into the one who is making your uh, binary, right? So it may be like, for example, if you're using Firefox from Flat, Flat Hub, uh, this is an open source application, right? So there is a source code available, but the one that is on Flatpak, of course, that is a binary, just like the binary in your um, distribution of choice. Uh, but this binary may be going through some, there may be some less uh, code scrutiny uh, in FlatHub, right? Also on FlatHub there are some proprietary applications which are distributed uh, without any source code and this is allowed, of course. For example, Microsoft Edge, that one is available for you on FlatHub. Let's check out some permissions on FlatHub. Here we are on Flatpak. I have already opened Microsoft Edge. So one of the things that people um, prop up as a positive of uh, Flatpaks is, of course, sandboxing. So how sandboxing works? The application has access to certain resources on your computer and there are some switches which you can toggle. So, for example, Microsoft Edge, if you go to potentially unsafe, you will see that can access hardware devices such as webcams can read and write all your data in downloads folder, I can access uh, contents of the screen on other devices, etc, etc, etc. I will advise you to read this for yourself on basically every application that you are downloading from FlatHub. So let's see some other applications. VLC. This one is very popular. And this is a video player, which I would expect to have access to my documents folder, my videos folder, my uh, maybe my music folder, etc. So where we go here, can access hardware, okay, can read and write all data on your file system. Okay, so this is not really normal, right? You would expect this kind of application not to have this kind of access. Uh, let's do another one. Discord. This one is popular for one reason. Uh, Discord has started supporting uh, this directly uh, and some of the distributions don't really have um, fast enough access to Discord updates. So this one is kind of a preferred version. So let's go to the potentially unsafe. Can access hardware devices such as webcams. Okay, this is expected can read and write data in your downloads folder, um, pictures, videos, um, etc. So these permissions are actually uh, pretty okay. All of this 
uh, is expected and of course it's a proprietary application so you cannot really see what is actually going on under the hood so one of the things i would recommend uh, in case you don't want to tinker via command line is to install let seal so when you click on one of your installed applications you will see that it has network access it's it has some other uh, switches that you can click uh, fall back to x11 uh, windowing system this one is disabled for some reason um, dbus messages smart cars printing system you can toggle all of this for example discord if you want um, you if you want to have access to the um, what, where is it all user files for example if you want to be able to upload files to some discord server from all your home folder you can click this uh, permissions let's see jump and bump this one should not have access to any of my files and indeed it does not have any access to my files okay so one of the things that i wanted to talk about flat pack is the um, matter of centralization so one of the key objections to canonical snap packaging format is centralization of course flat pack does not have this problem However, there is only one central place currently available. This is FlatHub. There are some other places like various uh, Linux distributions have their own uh, Flatpak repositories, but usually these are only for beta testing some applications or maybe some internal applications. What I'm saying is that these other um, hubs for Flatpak packages are not as big as FlatHub is. FlatHub is one central place for all the Linux uh, packages and they are trying to sell this story to us. It is working, it is working, but what I find odd a little bit is that a lot of you guys are kind of cheering for this to remain the case, right? A lot of you, may, maybe not in my comments per se, but I have seen on various social media uh, places that a lot of people don't actually want to see um, this thing to be become more complex right they want to have just one central place compared to the snap packages which do have uh, just one central place and that that is a bad thing but for flat pack there is a good thing for some reason so this is kind of odd I'm not going to get too deeply into this topic but uh, it is something worth considering one of the reasons why I have been making this video is because of this fine gentleman here who has raised some valid uh, questions, right? For example, uh, distributions will lose their meaning and identity. So this is something that I would like you to answer because in my opinion, uh, the, the way that I have approached Flatpaks is because of the Debian uh, distribution of my choice uh, until very recently uh, is basically a stable distribution and by stable I mean you're not getting any new software for two years uh, approximately so you would for example be a KDE Plasma user you would get uh, 5.27.5 I think in the latest book forum update and then you would be stuck with um, Kden Live version which may be a little bit buggy because that software is uh, pretty buggy and it gets updates which solve some issues then it gets some more bugs uh, it, it is what it is right but you want to have it updated and if you use the version that comes with Debian you might not have the best time uh, in the world so one of the solutions is to use FlatHub or maybe Snaps I don't know uh, but these containers let's concentrate, concentrate on FlatHub and Flatpaks for now uh, is something that might bring uh, the loss of identity to Linux distributions, especially if we go here and go to here, what it says here, Flatpak is the app store for Linux. So what they're saying here is that they're trying to market this uh, as the primary way to get applications, right? For, for me, I don't think this is um, this is the case, right? They might want to go for it. I'm not sure will they make it. Uh, it it's not up to me, right? Uh, but how I see Flatpaks and FlatHub is like a replacement uh, for software that's not available in my distribution of choice. For example, Brave browser and my Arch Linux install. 
Uh, one of the ways to get Brave Browser is through ArchUse repository. Uh, however, my uh, I, I'm a fresh Arch user, and personally, I don't. Uh, I, I'm not ready to put my trust into, let's say, random uh, people who upload stuff into ArchUse repository. Uh, if you participate in a discussion with uh, these people who are making this uh, specific application that you are uh, interested in, you might um, find some strength to put some trust into these uh, individuals, not all of them, but some of them, and then you might want to install uh, some of this software. Um, in this case, where the Brave, uh, Brave, Brave browser is uh, concerned, I'm putting my trust into the company that is uploading Brave to the Flatpak. Uh, so if you go here and type Brave, we'll open Brave and you will see uh, that this package is being uploaded uh, by the Brave company themselves. So uh, I'm not saying that this is um, the solution to all my trust problems, but the company who is making this browser, if I am installing their package uh, and their their binary, uh, this is a slightly higher trust level in my opinion than a random guy uploading to our user repository. Uh, and by random guy, I'm not pointing a finger in the particular person who is uploading Brave, I'm talking about uh, all of the software in our user repository. Maybe the, uh, the individual who is uploading Brave is trustworthy, but in order for me to trust him, I need to do some research on every single individu individual package in our uh, instead of just downloading through FlatHub. So the way I see it is that FlatHub will solve some of my issues. Let's go back to this question. Are Linux distributions losing their identity? My personal opinion is no. However, I would very much love to hear all of your answers, all of your opinions on how this works, right? Do you see FlatHub like a central Linux application repository in the future or do you think that distributions should uh, continue pushing their uh, identity, right? Uh, because uh, let me draw attention to one example. FreeBSD. This is of course not a Linux distribution but why I am mentioning this name here is because they uh, they have this system which I like. This is a stable operating system, stable as in Debian stable, right? So uh, they are releasing in a certain cadence, um, a stable versions of their operating system. You're getting new kernel, uh, new support for new hardware, uh, new ut system utilities. What, what GNU is uh, for Linux, right? Uh, they have their own thing. And this core operating system does not come with any third-party applications. Third-party applications are hosted inside their package management system. They call it ports. And these ports are not like the um, uh, main repository for Debian or Fedora. Uh, like if you install the current version of Fedora, you will get uh, some version of the application that you are going to install, right? And if you need a newer version, usually you will, you will have to wait half a year for the next Fedora for all of this software to update. Uh, in case of FreeBSD, for example, you will install Emacs, you will get, uh, most of the time you will have the latest uh, version of Emacs because their repository is like uh, a, a rolling distribution, but uh, attached on top of the stable uh, core operating system. So if you install Emacs on the latest um, FreeBSD version 14, it will be the same Emacs that is getting pulled uh, on your previous version of uh, FreeBSD if you're still on version 13, right? So uh, a rolling package management system bolted on top of the stable operating system, right? So in my opinion, this is like a perfect blend of what I would like to have with Linux. I'm not saying that such distributions do not exist, it's just that all of these main distributions have their own uh, thing, right? Arch is completely a rolling uh, distribution and currently I like using it, it, it fits my uh, current expectations, right? But it doesn't have all of the packages, I need to reach 
either for uh, A, E, U, R, or to the flat pack or snaps or something in order to get all of my software in a, in an easy to, to reach way, right? Or I can compile it myself. Uh, there are many options, right? I have compiled a couple of more uh, dot points here, right? Weak sandboxing, we have already talked about this. Loose permission model, uh, you know, we, we have talked about it. Centralization, we have passed through this. Uh, telemetry in proprietary apps, I didn't mention this, but this is kind of an obvious one, right? If you download uh, Microsoft Edge through uh, Flatpak or, or through any means on Linux, you are not really sure what this uh, software is doing. It, it's up to you whether you like this uh, installed on your system or not. Uh, it is what it is, right? Uh, dependency updates, uh, okay. This is one of the in interesting ones. Um, flat pack system, at least from the uh, flat hub perspective, uh, it will depend on some libraries, right? These libraries can be shared, but sometimes the libraries that are being used might be a little bit outdated and you need to trust all these maintainers to uh, regularly update it. Uh, but the problem comes from the fact that FlatHub is not as rigorous in security updates uh, as some of the distributions are. For example, you can pretty much lean on Debian people uh, to have your security uh, in, in their top priority, right? If there is some kind of a security breach in any of the libraries, uh, they will patch it pretty promptly and you can be sure that they will do that. Uh, for FlatHub, I just don't know. And this pretty much covers my uh, last point in, in this text. So, you know, uh, I, I would like to hear your opinion on flat packs. I think they are a good patch to an open wound. You know, if your distribution lacks uh, one of or one or two softwares or or, or something similar, uh, you might like patch it with uh, flat hub uh, and download a flat pack uh, package from there. But other than that, I would not really be afraid that this is going to take over the whole uh, Linux world and actually become, you know, the app store for Linux. Uh, I, I really don't think that is going to happen, um, but usually it's up to us and the whole Linux community to uh, steer all of this in the direction uh, in which we want it to go, right? So let me know in the comments what do you think about this topic? What do you think about um, distributions of Linux losing their identity potentially? And I don't know, maybe hit that uh, thank you button and I'm gonna see you in the next video.